Hello and welcome to this how-to course with me Rory from Harper Production and today I'm here with Sonic Academy giving you a complete how to use on FabFilter's Saturn. So what is it? It's basically a saturation plugin, hence the name Saturn, but it does a whole host more. It kind of acts as an overdrive and distortion and it also has some time stretching effects in there as well. There's a lot to talk about in this plugin, so I'll try and keep it as concise as I can. So what I'm first going to do in this particular video is show you the set parameters actually on the plugin, just show you about the user interface. And in the second video, we're going to actually apply it to a project which I've made up. So for the benefit of this particular video, I have got a little sort of project set up in the background, which you'll be able to hear some noises of a bass and we'll go on to showing you some drums in there as well, just to show you what the plugin actually can do. So first of all, let's have a look around the plugin. So at the top here, we have our undo and redo buttons. Next to that, we have an AB copy as well. So we can copy settings onto an A or a B reference. Then next to that, we have all our presets. And then next to that, we have a help button. So basically, if we enable show interactive help hints, we can then hover over certain parameters and it'll actually then go and tell us what they actually are. Then in this main interactive window here, this is basically where you're going to be showing a waveform of your signal going in. So if I play this now, you can see that we've got our audio waveform there showing us that the plugin is engaged and actually working. Then the main thing you're going to be looking at down here is basically our controls for our set bands. So you can have up to six bands worth of processing on each individual band. And how you get more bands is if you hover at the top here, you'll notice a little plus sign then basically comes to light. And the really cool thing about this actually is if you hover up, it actually fades in, which is a pretty neat bit of coding. So down at the bottom here, we've got some cool parameters that we can mess around with. We've obviously got a bypass to switch a particular band on or off. So because we've only got one band open, we haven't added any like here. We are then just simply going to delete those and I'll talk you over these. So we've got a bypass there. Below that, we have a mix so we can basically bleed in some of our dry signal and we can mix the dry and the wet together. Then we have a feedback knob, but this is obviously related to our frequency. So depending on what frequency we've got it set at, it's then going to put a real sharp peak resonant at where you set your frequency. So that's basically going to start feeding back. But you've got to be very careful with that. And there is actually another parameter that you need to make sure you've got enabled to make sure that you don't go deaf. And I mean that because it actually does start self-oscillating if you've got it set on certain things. Next to that, we've got the frequency. So like I mentioned, we need that set to, in order for the feedback to work. So wherever we've got that set, it's obviously going to be adding a certain resonant peak there. Then next to that button, we've got dynamics. So we can either expand it by turning it all the way to the left, or we can actually totally crush the dynamics and put it all the way to the right. So think of this almost acting like a compressor. So we can either squash the dynamics so it sounds very straight or we can open it up so we can actually dial into the dynamics a bit better by dialing it all the way to the left. Then in the middle here this is probably the knob that you're going to be focusing on the most and that's how much drive how much of the fab filter saturn we actually want to hear and how much drive we want the plugin actually to have on our original source material. So this is a really good indication of how much we're adding as you can see by how red it goes. So all the way around to the right, that means we've got it on full. So this is very bright in the middle here. And if we dial that back, it goes very dark. Then just above these four knobs here, we have all our different tube types. So basically the further down you go, the more distortion and more overdrive you're gonna be getting. So we've obviously got clean tube and it goes on to warm tube, broken tube, various bits like that. But at the bottom here, we have some slightly different ones. So if we go on say smudge, this actually acts as more of a time stretching algorithm. So if I play this bass part here now, and then if I just slightly dial this round, we get some really quite unique time stretching effects there, which you might not expect from a, basically a saturation or a distortion plugin, which again is a really quite neat and unique thing to this plugin. We've also got rectify. which again just totally destroys the signal. And then below that we've got to destroy, so that really does destroy the signal, but this more or less sounds a bit like bit crushing, so it actually reduces the sample rates. I 
Okay, so that's when we're basically totally mangling up the original source input. Then to the right of the drive knob, we have our three bands. So don't get confused with the bands being up here, where we add them here. We can obviously delete those. These three sliders basically relate to bass, middle, and treble, okay, to, on that particular band. So we can either boost the bass, or we can boost the middle, or we can boost the treble. It also has an additional presence knob here as well, which we can boost. So that's going to be boosting around about sort of two and a half to 5,000K. So it just adds that little bit of presence depending on what you've got it on. If you want to reset any of the parameters actually on this plugin, if you just hold down Command and then just click, these will all begin to reset. Then to the right of that, we have our band one level. So depending on how many bands you've got, you might want your low end to stick out more than your high end or vice versa. You can just simply turn up those to whatever you desire. We also have a panning knob there or panning ring. So you can either have that set all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So imagine you can have your, your low end to the left speaker and you can have your high end going to the right speaker. So that is really handy as well. Then just below the big drive knob in the middle, we have a modulation section. So basically we can add any kind of modulation to affect various parameters within the plugin. So let's say we add a LFO. We can add the LFO by clicking here and dragging that to maybe the drive. And then that LFO is then going to be affecting that drive. And then you can imagine how many different parameters you can actually set with this. Maybe you want another controller or maybe you want an envelope generator. And you can just map these to whatever things you wish and through that you can actually start gauging how many sounds and how many different types of sounds you can get by adding loads of different modulation so the you don't just have to add one bit of modulation to one parameter you can then add multiple ones indicated by these bars that appear at the top of the main modulation window here so to get rid of those just simply click the X and then that is them gone. The only downfall with this plugin that I've noticed is that you can't make it any bigger, which is a bit of a shame because some of the other FabFilter plugins you can actually enlarge, which is great. But for this, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. So down at the bottom here, we have a MIDI learn. So you can assign any of the parameters in this plugin. You can assign them to MIDI knobs or triggers or pads or faders or whatever. So again, that's a really handy tool. And that is across all the FabFilter range. To the right of that, we have a channel mode, so you can go from left and right or mid side. Then to the right of that, we have an auto mute. Now, this button you need to keep on, especially if you're going to be using the feedback and the frequency here. What auto mute does is basically if you've got anything that you want to feed back because you quite like that aggressive sound and you've got it sort of self oscillating, if you don't have auto mute on, it will continue to self oscillate and it can be quite dangerous for your speakers and your ears more importantly. So make sure you've got auto mute on and basically that will just rain it all back and it will turn it down automatically for you. But if you do want that effect to carry on, so the feedback, so you can imagine like a guitar when you go near a monitor or the speaker, it's then going to be self-oscillating here in feedback. So if you're using this on guitars, maybe switch that off, but definitely use it with caution. Then to the right of that, we have a high quality button. So this is basically just affecting the oversampling. So if you want to get a bit more quality out of it, just click that and then that will put you in high quality mode but do remember that when you start clicking high quality mode and oversampling certain plugins it will be affecting your cpu and your ram so just keep an eye on that and if your computer can handle it switch it on and then next to that we have the basically the source input that we want to use or basically what the plugin is then going to be affecting so we want it to affect the output of this plugin so imagine it going left and right we've got a source material coming in and then we've got the output so we want the plugin to be affecting the output so leave it on output but you can have it or you can either listen to the input going into it to make sure that you're getting the correct source material and you can also listen to the side chain as well which is then dictated on logic in particular up at the top right here then next to that we can choose how loud we want our input to be and we can also choose how loud we want our output to be we can also choose if we want it going out the left side or the right side with these little pan rings here which is quite a common feature amongst the fab filter range then to the right of that we have our main mix knob so it's basically just the global mix knob for the whole plugin so we can either bleed in a bit of the dry original source material or we can have it all the way wet so we're just hearing what's coming out of saturn 
So that's pretty much all the parameters there, apart from this one little one, which I almost forgot about. So you can either have the window set to normal, or you can let, have it set to wide, so you can get a couple of more, I think you get about two more bands of processing doing it that way. But again, that's only doing sort of two op sizing options, whereas some of the other plugins like the Pro-Q2, you can actually open up full screen, which is quite handy, and it'd be good if they could add it to this feature. But as I say, we're here now, and this is what we've got to work with. So what I wanna show you now is just some of the tube settings that we're gonna be using here. I've got a baseline which got set up here. And then I'm gonna show you some of the other tube and amp models as well as the ones down the bottom here. So with warm tube, this is basically just emulating tubes that you find typically maybe a guitar amp or an older guitar amp. And this is basically just gonna add a light bit of saturation, but if you drive it a bit too hard, you can obviously notice it, so let's play it through. Okay, so it adds that very subtle, if it's not driven too hard, bit of saturation, so it just adds that nice bit of harmonic content. And if we go down to, say, broken t tube, so this is basically just going to really mangle the signal, make it sound, well, like a broken tube, if you like. So listen for yourself. Okay, so again, that's a really cool, handy feature as well. And then let's have a go down to Screaming Amp. Another thing worth noting when you're clicking on the dials, if you click on the outside here, it's gonna go in sort of a circular motion. You're gonna to have to go around with your mouse like that. However, if you click in the middle, you can go up and down. Okay, so there's a little tip for you there. Then if we go down to heavy saturation, let's have a listen to that. So that's really mangling the signal and making it sound very heavy indeed. And then like I mentioned earlier in this video, we've got Smudge. This is a very, very cool sort of time stretching algorithm that it's using. Okay, so just for the sake of this particular video, just to wrap up the one on the bass, because I'm going to be showing you this on the drums very shortly. Let's try some presets here. So let's go on, let's go on effects and let's go down to delay. Okay, and then we'll flick through a few more. So this is probably a good example to explain about the different bands here. So we've got five bands set up here, and then what you can do is click on each individual one. So this segment just here is going to be adhering to this band, as, you, as it's indicated that it's sort of highlighted, it's sort of glowing a little bit there. Whereas if we click on the different bands, you can then begin to edit the certain parameters within those. Then what's a really cool feature about this plugin as well is that you can actually solo and mono, or sorry, mute various different bands as well. So let's solo this one. And we can also turn it up as well. Okay, you can also do that on the same on all the other bands as well. And you can either add one more band in there too. So your sixth band. So that's basically it sounding on a bass. What I want to show you quickly is actually it's on drums. So let's open up Logic and let's bring up the instance on that, on our drums. So the smudge feature on drums works particularly well. And what, like I've mentioned, this is sort of a time stretching sort of algorithm, which makes it sound really unique and it draws it out, but it's really good for sort of build ups. So if I do this up here, so I've got everything unmute, well, basically unsoloed. So I'm gonna play that through and I'll show you it by turning up this drive knob in the middle. So 
So that could be used as a really cool creative tool as well. So you can imagine you're automating that in certain builds and drop, and then to go into a drop. So that again, that again is a really handy feature, not one that you'd expect from a saturation or overdrive or distortion plugin. So the fact it's in there is really, really unique to this plugin. So another one that we can go on is probably Destroy. Let's have a play around with that. So around about 50%, so that's actually quite low for our dial here. It's actually become unrecognizable. Okay, so you can imagine just the possibilities are kind of endless with this plugin and it sounds great and there's so many options to play with. It's just an all day learning curve with this. So there we are. I've just shown you around all the parameters. In the next video, I want to show you sort of real world examples of how we're going to use this. So I'll probably show you how to use the build up and the drops. So what we've just used there, how to incorporate that into an actual track. And we're also going to be using it as sort of a mixing tool to help things stand out in the mix as well. So I've been Rory from Hyper Production. Head over to the next video and you've been watching Sonic Academy. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.